Welcome back to Stream It. It has been a while, so that means we're officially in season four. It's season four, right? Absolutely. That's how the rules work. I think it was well, one episode like in season three. Season 3.5.1. <laughs> yeah. Zero. We were going strong, and then, yeah, I think there was like one for 3.5. And then you know what happened is the seniors had to graduate and take us out of our normal yeah. and then summer rhythm. And yeah. Of July. It was just. Cam takes three week vacations. Yeah, th <laughs> that was the biggest part. Yeah, I mean, that maybe played a role, but it's okay. Uh, it gave us time to watch TV. Exactly. We've got content to talk about now. Yeah. All right. So, to be in the season, why not talk about what our favorite summer blockbuster ever is? One that we were alive to actually attend. Yes. Alive and able to <laughs> comprehend. Yes. Because, like, yes. I guess Lion King was one. Spoiler. Was that yours? Oh. No. Okay, good. I wasn't alive. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Right. But what was that 93? 94. 94. But, like, I didn't like it as much as I do now until mm -hmm. a little bit later. I Maybe definitely later. saw it in the theater, and my mom talks we're the, about... We're the eldest statesman here. Yeah. So. Um, my mom talks about how she had three unconsolable children crying when Mufasa died. So I comprehend. I <laughs> could comprehend. <Yeah. laughs> I didn't put it on my list because I was also five. So it That's doesn't like mean, register. So you, you like one that we were able to actually register as summer blockbusters. Yeah. Yeah. I'm torn. So the between ground rules three. are right. mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have a solid answer that they want to go first? Because I need to think. I do. All right. Do you want me so I have a. Do you want to say it at the same time? Okay, one, two, two three. Dark, Dark Knight. Knight. Yes. <laughs> Wait, oh, that's both of yours, or your guess yeah. is? Uh oh. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's right, right? Yeah, my number two is Independence Day. Like it was right there because yeah. that's the first time I remember going to a movie in the summer and like going home and being like, "This is what happened in the movie." Telling someone <laughs> like, but no, it was Dark Knight. I saw it at midnight. I was going through a list and I saw that on there and I was like, that's gotta be it. With there's the Joker and like it's just some, like such an iconic movie. I feel like Yeah, I saw it midnight in a packed I sat in the front row because the theater was packed. Yeah. That that's tough. Good. Yeah. Front row. <laughs> yeah. And I also like hadn't seen Batman Begins until like two weeks before I saw that. Oh nice. So someone said, you know, there's this is a second like a new Batman trilogy, and I was like, what are you talking? What was the first one? Just completely missed Batman Begins. Didn't even know it was a movie. Oh yeah, I've seen Batman Begins a while before I watched The Dark Knight, so I was looking forward to it. Plus, there was a lot of hype around it because it was, I think it was right at the beginning of the summer, and like it was, you know, this big new movie. The Joker had been announced, like all this stuff, and then it didn't disappoint. So you went and you were like, wow, that was even, I was so hyped for that. And it still blew my, blew me away. Um, so yeah, I just, that was, that was epic. I remember going home cause I was, that was summer and I was in college. So it was like staying up till three wasn't uncommon. No. I got home from the movie and was Googling who are going to be the villains in the next Batman movie. And the movie hadn't even technically opened i went to a midnight showing and i was like who's gonna be in the next one like the one after yeah dark knight, dark knight rises yeah, yeah. which so much disappointment when it's like the rumors that were floating around about like the riddler and it's and that and it just was tom hardy talking into a mask i liked i liked that one too it didn't let it down for like it wasn't a letdown for me but the dark knight the first one was yeah just like i feel like that's what made going to Christopher Nolan movies into like a big deal. Cause like inception Yeah, he crushed that. or like tenant. What was the one before tenant? That was really confusing. Was it inception? It yeah. might've been inception. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that top still spinning? Who knows? Who knows? Is this reality? <laughs> I never even saw that movie. What? I saw like the first half, but I, There's I was so thing. confused. <laughs> <laughs> I should, I think we stopped it halfway through and we're like, we'll pick this up. I was like, we don't have to. <laughs> so if you saw it right after Batman Begins, you had the abrupt change of who's the actress? Uh, oh, Katie, Katie Holmes, Holmes to Katie Maggie Holmes, Gyllenhaal. Yeah. That's a big pet peeve for you. I did not like that. 
I, I don't like when they switch it up like that. But what are you going to do? Yeah. Oh, BTW, the confusing movie I was thinking of by Christopher Nolan was Interstellar. Oh, oh no. I, I liked Interstellar. I, was, I think that's but where it he, was a lot. I think that's where he really dove into the, I'm just going to make you not know what's happening in this movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just like severe anxiety. I think <laughs> Is that movie. Inception tracked, I'm pretty sure. Inception tracked. It was just deep. It was like in a, it went into like little, like a dream within a dream within a dream. Yeah. Which is, I guess, a little bit confusing, but it also said, like, all right, we're going deeper into the... You know what I mean? Right, and you had to, like, float and get dropped. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It all made... That was a complex idea that made sense. I feel like Interstellar, and then, I don't know if you've seen Tenet, are complex ideas that, like, don't really make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Does he also write these? I think so. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. Clearly the same mind as writing these three movies. Yeah. I just didn't know if it was him. So what's yours, Sarah? Um, kind of in the same universe, Wonder Woman, the first Ooh, one. Good one. Oh yeah. Yeah, I went into it with no expectations because even at that time I wasn't even watching Marvel, so I didn't really care about superhero movies besides Spider Man. Um, and yeah, my friend point, wanted to see it. There's a lot of Marvel movies. Out. Yeah, it's yeah, been out for like nine late. years. I was really? very late, wow, so I had like probably all of us. them to watch. Wow. Um, good, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Caught right up. <laughs> but I saw this one, and I still didn't even really understand, like, DC, Marvel. So I went into it expecting nothing. And it was so good. It was so motivational. It was, <laughs> it was so I, uplifting. I loved that, that, first. that was, it, like, leaps and bounds ahead of all the other DC movies. Yeah, it's and I, so much better. Everyone was saying that it would fail just because I, I feel like Dark Knight, that whole trilogy, was, like, the last really good stuff that dc had so when this came out it was kind of like "Mm, all right like they're trying wonder woman now it's crazy that our so far our favorite blockbusters are dc and we don't even we don't like like we're not comic book we like marvel more than dc (laughs) but our our favorite summer blockbusters are both DC, and um like the avengers is one of the is a summer blockbuster like all of them yeah. So, but we still chose. Yeah. I don't know. I guess Endgame. Was that a summer one? That was April. Yeah. So, not very long. Yeah. But I feel like. But the we, first yeah. Avengers was. And, like, that was pretty epic. And with the exception of the first Avengers, I feel like I didn't count those because it's like you knew they'd be good. I don't know. I feel like Wonder Woman for me was like I a was surprise. surprised. Yeah. That makes yeah. Sense. I think if you go to a blockbuster and it. I feel like there's always hype around them, and mm. it delivers. You're like, okay, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like that's what yeah. does it, sells it for you. Because like, we got pretty jazzed on this show about GBK, and like, it I'm, was gl- fun. I'm glad I didn't spend 15 bucks for it. Yeah, but like, okay. and it was a, a blockbuster, I guess. But like, that's not gonna be anybody's favorite because it it disappointed. The story mm. wasn't there, but I'm just overall like, if you go and it like hits and you're like, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. That's when you know it's a good summer blockbuster. Mm. Yeah. Oh, good, good question. Good summer question. Uh, that was Tom. Oh, I do what I can. Nice. I got my moments. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just keep it going with the the summer theme. We've had some time to watch some of the new things that have come out this summer. What have we been watching? Let's just play a little bit of catch up. What about, what if we take it, uh, not to jump in here, but what if it. we take it by streaming service? Oh, okay. 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 I'll start us off. <laughs> Amazon Prime, The Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt. Did oh, I've see seen that? I've seen previews for it. Oh, well, maybe I don't want to give you, um, you know, don't want to spoil it or anything because this is worth a watch. Um, it seemed like it was going to be your typical action movie. Um, but actually had a lot of depth. It was basically about climate change, oh. which is not what you were expecting. No. Um, but there's also like a time travel piece, and it, it had the action that you were wanting and like fighting aliens, but it also had like a really good story, and um, I was impressed. So Okay. Good job, Amazon Prime. Let's check that out. So are we going to... Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime. Yeah, if you have an Amazon Prime. I don't know. I'd have have to. You you can just say pass. Take a little look. 
I did I did put together a list for myself. Oh, jeez. Do I have Prime? I I'm going to have to pass on Prime. I like I know I just recently rewatched Fight Club on Prime, but that's not I don't think we can that's talk about Fight Club. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> we don't talk about what happens in Fight Club. <laughs> right, you can't. So, but I don't think there's been a TV show or movie that's like an original that I've watched. All right. Well, all right. So Amazon Prime, you just got one. <laughs> that's okay. It's their summer blockbuster. Yeah. But it was good. You guys should check it out. Okay. That does sound good. I didn't know what it was about. I'll give you a little, just a, without spoilers, but basically underlying theme of climate change. But basically there's a, it's called the Tomorrow War because like 30 years in the future, there's a war against aliens and the humans are losing. So they create a way to time travel back to now, current day, and are like they start to have a draft and are bringing people to the future to fight in like waves. You're there for seven days. If you make it, you automatically get zapped back to your time. And if you die, you, you die. But they're like getting reinforcements from, in reinforcements from the past to fight this tomorrow war. That is original. Re- that is There's, pretty unique. It was like cool how they did it. And like, I don't know. I think, I think it's, it's worth a watch. Would they not want to go to a time where they could stop the war before it happens? I think that that's part of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it was like they couldn't they couldn't do they it. They can't. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. It's like the, the whole time travel spiel in Endgame. Why don't you just go back to baby Thanos and Right. Th- that and they don't have an explanation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that premise doesn't work in this movie and they do like address it. Okay. All right, that's good. Which is cool. It's like part of the mystery of like how how to stop it. Mm. And win the war. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's good. You'll like it. Okay. Do you want to set up the so, next? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, well, I, I think I've spent most of my time, as I normally do, with HBO Max. Ooh. Mm. Um, I got an HBO Max. So Max. they, well, was, at, per your request, I'd been catching up on Rick and Morty. Oh, which, yes. and then I, you asked me recently, it's an, not a newer movie, movie, but I watched Spirited Away, yes. which is like a... Japanese animated movie, which I hadn't ever oh. seen. And then... Wait, so the Rick and Morty, you were catching up, though, on HBO Max. On not HBO Max. On no, HBO. not on Hulu yet. Um, but I'm done. I'm, like, ready for Hulu. Nice. And then... But they a movie... I mean... Jeez, it goes into my top three that we were going to get to later. There's a movie called No Sudden Move. That's an HBO Max original. And... It has Don Cheadle and Benicio del Toro, John Hamm, and David Harbour, and oh. it's directed by Steven Soderbergh, who directed like the Oceans movies. Wow! And it's a heist movie Fun. set in like the fifties in Detroit, which is cool because it like gets uh, like the car big three car companies involved. That's like then there's like a big twist, a big surprise, and it was. Pretty good. Okay. It's like just like a fun, like fast paced. Um, Macaulay Culkin's brother, what's his name? He's in it. He's oh, that. from like Scott Pilgrim? Yes. I yeah, Rory. His... Rory oh. Culkin, right? Yeah. That no. sounds right. No. <laughs> I don't know. But he's in it, and it's just, it's just like a fun, you know, like hour and half, hour and 45 minute movie that's about a heist. It's fun. I like that. It's, it's a good cast. Us. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so uh, HBO Max. My HBO Max was, I just kind of stumbled upon it, um, The Nevers, mm-hmm. which I don't know why the name is The Nevers. But anyways, um, it's a kind of a steampunk, um, like Victorian London setting. Um, but basically there's this big um, event like something flies through the sky and you don't know what it is at first and because of this event there's people have been like touched it says and it they have like little superpowers um not like superhuman strength superpowers but like um see like flashes into the future or like can make like plants grow or like um and so 
society at that time was trying to figure out how to deal with these like touched or gifted people and some people are like it's an abomination they're like not whatever they're devils or something and then these people are also trying to survive they're kind of like an under i don't know so it's the whole their their story and how like they try to fit into the society um and then they get into like why and how it all happened and what started it so it's a good little ride it does sound good. That's very on brand for yeah. It's your you know, taste. my sci-fi. I was gonna say, do you have have you and Ari created an algorithm where it's just <laughs> like spit out shows that are perfectly in our niche? It, it's right. It's right there, right in our sweet spot. Um, yeah, it's it is similar to like uh, Carnival Row that I've talked about before mm-hmm. on Amazon Prime. Um, kind of like the minority being these gifted people, like that kind of thing. Like X Men. Yeah. That does sound good. So, um, I think so. The actress she was in High, um, Highlander, no, Outlander. Oh, okay. And the the sis Jamie, Jamie's sister in Outlander. Do you know Outlander? All right, so you wouldn't. She's great. She was great. <laughs> Is that a fantasy show? No, that's well, sort of. It's like time travel, right? Yeah, Outlander. This is last last summer. Um, this woman goes to this like sacred place and gets sent back in time to that location, but revolutionary. I don't know some way back, and she like has to try to survive in like Scotland and whatever time this was. So it's a very popular show. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people talking about it. Yeah. Interesting. I've only seen most of the first season, but anyway. So this was HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna have to pass. Oh, wow. I haven't watched any recent. You diversify. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I do. Well, I think Sarah with oh. HBO Max is kind of like me with um, Amazon. I don't watch a lot on Amazon. I think there's certain mm-hmm. things where it's just like. When but when you're looking for a show, don't you like? Go and look. I'm like, all right, what what does this have to offer? What does this have to offer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It usually you starts HBO, it. Netflix, and then I'm like, hmm, do I want to watch like a movie? Keep, I like to keep a tab on all of them. I think with Amazon, I just don't like the layout. Mm-hmm. It's not very like. It's not clean. Intuitive. Yeah. Not clean. Yeah, it's not clean, and it, they throw in the free stuff, but then randomly it's like movies to rent, and mm-hmm. then you have to like look for like. Oh yeah. no! I have to pay for that. Yeah, you gotta click through. Right? Yeah, included with Prime. Included with Prime. Yeah. And I do like HBO. I just, I don't know. I don't know why. I so much of the stuff sounds so interesting. I think I'm just like not in the mood to like commit to something. Yeah. And then I watch a movie that I've already seen before. <laughs> HBO Max. I do that instead. <laughs> Are we going to later say what our top three favorites were that we've been watching recently? Like, should I hold some back? I mean, No Sudden Move was going to be on my top three. Okay. But, or we could just go into it, Oh, I thought, continue I thought this we were just, just go for it. Well, yeah, I thought we were just All spitballing right. size. Or we could just start w- talking about our top three and see where that takes us. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Or if you want to keep going service by service, feel free. <laughs> I don't have one for Hulu, other than Rick and Morty. No, I, I do have... I don't have one for Hulu, but there's something on there that seems really cool. It's called The Summer of Soul, and it's um, from Questlove, made it, directed it. Oh, I've heard of that. But it's a, in 1969, at like the same time Woodstock was happening, there was a Harlem Soul Festival, and it's like, it's just, it's a live music. It's the whole, basically the whole concert, I think. But as like Stevie Wonder, Gladys Knight and the Pips, and it's just like a whole concert, and that's the whole that's cool. thing. Yeah, it won something at like Sundance or hmm. something. It won some big award festival. But it, that might be more towards like documentary than like an actual mm. yeah. like feature film. Right. But I haven't seen it yet. All right. Got a Netflix one. Oh, there's a surprise. <laughs> It's not going to surprise you what I'm about to say either. Fear Street Part 1. Oh. 
yes. that I've been talking about for months. <laughs> I watched that. Uh, very good. Very gory. Ooh. So, because it, it's based on R.L. Stein books. So, th- kids to teenager. I don't know if these ones were like more teen based when he like published them, but they were like PG, PG 13. And they were like, we're going to make the movies R. And people were like, that's great. So they just thought it would be more like not for children. No, it's like, it's not for kids. It is bloody and gross. And it was creepy. But like, I can deal with creepy. But like, it was pretty gory. (laughs) (laughs) There was one part that like ruined my night. Oh, jeez. But it was really good. Um, And like, at the end of it, like, you wanted to know what happened in the next one. So basically, well, you probably, because you read the books, right? No, no, I didn't read Fear Street. I was a kid. I read Goosebumps. Oh, Goosebumps. That's yeah. right. Um, basically, there's this town that's been cursed, but no one really thinks it's cursed. It's more of like, it's a joke. Like, oh, like the town is just horrible. But yeah, it's because of the witch's curse. Um, but it, it, this isn't a spoiler. This is like in the trailer. Right. It is actually cursed. Because the witch that, like, started it all will, like, possess random people and have them, like, do her dirty work for her. But everyone just thinks, like, oh, our town is awful. Like, look at all these bad kids that we churn out. Uh, Even though I'm, like, if they're murdering people, I think that's a little more than, like, a bad town. (laughs) Um, And it happens and you follow a group of kids that it directly affects and then... The next movie, I haven't seen the second or third yet, but they're all out now. The second one goes back to the 70s because you meet a character at the end of the first one who's like, oh, this happened to me, but like maybe I can help. Let's go back. And then I think the third one is like, we need to go all the way back. So it's like through flashbacks, but you're still following the main group from the first one. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Do... All the same actors play the same, like, different roles in all the movies? Yeah. So that's what confused me because I was looking on IMDb and it made no sense. But, yes, in the flashbacks, the some of the cast is playing, like, people from the 1600s, but then they're also... That's kind of cool, though. ...current day. I think that's kind of... Kind of cool. Just yeah. like... It's like, oh, it's just this person doing some, you know... You don't have to, like, have triple the amount of cast i'm sure netflix was happy about it yeah oh yeah and like so does the story roll through like is it like one is it like a mini series basically yeah, yeah. but They're going all backwards like, but keeping the. N- it's like flashing between like backwards and like present day they're still dealing with it so hmm. even in the third movie it's present day but they're flashing back to, to like 1666 or oh. something with some of the same cast who are like in present day, also in. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And gory. And gory. I'm, I mean, I'm a wimp, but it was pretty gory. At least I know some of it was like, by all accounts, that was like, mm. yeah. Because it's like slasher. Uh, wow. But, yeah. So it didn't disappoint. That puts me on the fence because I like the premise, but I'm not crazy about the gory most of it is fine yeah uh, I mean do I want to watch a slasher thing like, like if you were fine with like Game of Thrones like it's not like then you'd be all right yeah. there was one part that reminded me of a different scene in Game of Thrones uh, that I've also said made me stop watching Game of Thrones <laughs> for like months yeah. let's guess it Go ahead. (laughs) The mountain versus the red viper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was similar. Come on. That's easy. (laughs) Um, But it would probably be fine. Yeah, it would be fine. Wow. I mean, does Great British Baking Show count for Netflix? I mean, it's on Netflix, but I don't think it's not a narrative story. If that's what you're into, then it counts. It's great. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? I'd love to. So there's a tent. (laughs) <laughs> in a beautiful field in Britain. And they get bakers from all over the country to bake. Sounds ex- it is exactly what it sounds like. But no, what actually is like 
gets you hooked on it is cool. they're so nice to each other. It's not like if you're watching Chopped or like Iron Chef, they're just like, wow, that looks amazing. Like, wow, you're doing a great job. Like, oh, you got Star Baker today. Way to go. Oh, <laughs> it's, wow, it's, it's a real feel good show. So you just sit back, you watch it nice and easy. <laughs> so is it a contest? Or is it? Yes. Like the at the end, there's a winner, but they get like a plate with like an there's no like prize money there's oh, it's like you are the you're the best yeah here. yeah wow. <laughs> and actually it's someone who won it now has two netflix cooking specials do wow. they do they do specific like everybody's making cupcakes today yeah of course i feel like you know what i'm talking about <laughs> you do no i don't yeah there's cupcake week okay there's <laughs> bread week Ooh. there's biscuit week oh wow now here's this, I'm at, okay? Oh, wow. One time they had muffins, right? Somebody made a scone. No, oh. no. Guys, what's a muffin to us and what's a muffin to them is different. We call them English muffins. So you're watching, they're not puffing over and you're like, wait a second, what is this? And then you're like, hey. What do they call? Knucklehead. I think muffins. popovers. What? No, a popover is a different thing. Everything's different. We're different countries. So are English muffins or their muffins? Yes. Oh, my goodness. See? See? Now you're into it. Uh, it's just, it is like really relaxing. Though. It's How just... many different ways can you make an English muffin? <laughs> Flavors. Flavors. So that's the thing. It's like it's biscuit week and people are making regular biscuits. Is biscuits week and English muffin week very different? Biscuits are fluffier. Well, yeah. So then, there, then there. So here's the deal. You just need a soundbite that. It, <laughs> there's three. Every episode has three challenges. There is the, um, like your best thing, like what you are pride yourself on in this category. So your best biscuits. Oh, okay. Then there is like a blind. They're, they're given a recipe from one of the two baking judges, and it's stripped down. So it's like. Okay, make your biscuits, bake. Doesn't tell you the temperature, doesn't tell you how long. So it's like a real challenge. Then they come out and judge those. And then the last one, they have like a week to prepare, come back on the weekend, and it's called a showstopper. So they like blow it out. And it's like, you know, if it's Christmas themed, it's like people are making the North Pole, all that stuff. It's cool. Wow. It's, it's super mindless, yeah. which is awesome about it. Sure. But it's addicting because there's like 10 seasons. So then you're just like, and you get invested in in the people. You're like, I don't like this guy. She's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this guy should be Star Baker. <laughs> You're just invested. Wow. It's the only thing close to reality TV I dabble in. Mm. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, there you go. Uh, great British baking show. Yeah. Your own spot on stream. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> Check it out. Oh, Netflix. I think the only Netflix show I've watched... Is in the Heights. That's HBO. That's HBO. Then... <laughs> see, see the research we put into the show? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was... Oh, you're right. It was mm -mm. HBO. Then, yeah, I don't think I've watched any Netflix. Wow. Hmm. Not that I can think of. I think Netflix, as of late, may call me crazy. And I might be wrong because I know they like are usually have one movie or something nominated for like an Oscar and stuff. But I feel like they focus a lot on like young adult stuff. They do. I think that's a, because I think they have a lot of teenagers and college kids that just like binge stuff like crazy. So they they're like, this is really our target audience. Because mm -hmm. yeah. like The Irishman was on there it was nominated for like 11 Oscars. And I'm sure it has been lapped over and over with like Riverdale. Right. The integrity, like, I feel like it's interesting that they're not putting like a lot of effort into their shows. Where, not effort, but like, like they're not making blockbusters or whatever. They're mm. trying to make a lot of consumable content. I just it's feel like, like, like an interesting thing to, to be doing. I have no numbers to back this up, but I feel like they're two biggest shows of 2020 were Bridgerton and Queen's Gambit. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like those 
Bridgerton definitely is has a very specific audience in mind. I thought Queen's Gambit was awesome, but I feel like it was also like Beth was younger, so it like's going to attract like a younger crowd. I don't know. Yeah. I guess for me, maybe this is exactly proving your point, but I would prefer some of these bigger shows. And that's why I haven't watched anything on Netflix all summer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, so. But and maybe it's a strategy. Maybe they're like, it's summer. Like, how, are we going to get someone to invest in like 10 episodes of a 50 minute per episode show? Right. So they mm. do like Fear Street. And it's like, okay, the next one comes out next week. It's yeah. a movie. A little young adultish. Yeah. Like, I think their biggest show this summer was. Never Have I Ever that just came out. But it's written by Mindy Kaling and I think directed and everything. So like it's definitely probably better than a lot of the other young adult shows that are out because it's from her. Yeah. But it's still about like a high school girl. Yeah. Who does a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, do your thing, Netflix, I guess. Yeah. It's I working. think they put all their eggs in one basket and the basket is that movie with Leo and Jennifer Lawrence. Which I can't wait for, yeah. Yeah, it's going to uh, be great. The more I hear about well, it, like, do you um, know? Go ahead. Stranger Things, right? That, oh, yeah. So, like, there, there'll be more of that type of thing, but maybe you're right, like, this summer, they're just trying to, like, push out a bunch of yeah young adult content. Mm-hmm. Did you know that movie's supposed to be, like, a satire and, like, a dark comedy? I recently heard that. I thought it was supposed to be like a serious, like, I did too, threat like, to earth movie. Yeah, but it's, I think it's like satirizing s- probably just like global warming and like stuff like that because it's mm-hmm. a comet coming to hit, hit the earth. And oh, wow. so, yeah. It'll be great. Did anyone have one from another platform? <laughs> Or Disney top Plus three. on Lo- Loki on Disney Plus. Yeah, I feel like we're. I think we'll all get there because we're going to do our top three right, soon. Well, I think we've covered <laughs> enough. So yeah, my top three. I'm gonna. I think I have got to include the Tomorrow War mm-hmm. on Amazon. Um, I think I would say the Nevers, which I also talked about, and then of course, Space Jam. Ah. Oh. <laughs> You would. <laughs> it wasn't as good as the first one. Well, I do like Space Jam. I did see someone because, like, people are, you know, like, us millennials are so into trying to say, like, no, our childhood was better and why remake and all that. Someone did say, you know, it's a movie for kids. Like, when we loved it, we were kids. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. it stars the Looney Tunes. <laughs> like, yeah. don't take it too serious. Right. Oh, it was fun. It was, you know, they tried to make it modern and the whole thing, and it was fun. LeBron was decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just feel like LeBron's so stiff, mm-hmm. so robotic and yeah. calculated. It's just well, he like... he was a dad in this. Yeah. Like, that was, so that, that hit the soft spot for me. <laughs> oh, of course. MJ was a dad, too. Remember his kids was helped? kids in it? Yeah, his kids helped Bugs and Daffy wrestle his oh, shorts yeah. away from the dog. But I wasn't a dad then. So. Right, you were a child. <laughs> <laughs> Big dad story, Space Jam. <laughs> it's so of the time, though. Like now, it's LeBron. Just yeah. because, like, little kids love LeBron. Right, right, right. Like maybe could have found a better athlete that could act better, but they're like, yeah. nope, LeBron. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But it was good. Um, they were they were they went with like the whole tech thing and like they get sucked into like a server thing I don't know but it was cool it was it was unique. Did you know that the up until the like uh, press all the press for this movie, the original Space Jam's website was left intact. So when you went on it, it was like the 1996 graphics and everything, uh-huh. and like you click on something and nothing like loaded because it wasn't there anymore and oh, stuff. <laughs> and now if you go on, it's obviously promoting this new one, but in the corner you can click see original website and it's, oh, that's cool. yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Do you want to go Sarah? Sure. Well, fear street was 
one of my top one, two, three. and three. <laughs> Haven't seen the second and third I know, yet. I know. I'm scared. Um, Loki on Disney Plus. Loki was good. Did you finish it? Yeah. We can't talk oh, about we... it because we have a we have an intern now. Our podcast producer. He's about to start it. He's about to start oh. it. So we'll hold off. So one day soon we'll yeah. we could do like a show. whole yeah. season five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all right, I'll just say that that's one of my top three, and then also on Netflix. This isn't original to Netflix, but it's where you can watch it now. Jane the Virgin, which I've said that you would like. You and Ari yes. would like it. Um, it's Gina. I don't remember her last name. She was in Brooklyn Annihilation. Oh. She oh. was like the tough one. Is it Gina Rodriguez? Is that? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> yeah. That's her. Um, she lives with her mother and her grandmother. And her grandmother's super religious and is like really strict about like relationships specifically because Jane... Her mom accidentally had her when she was like 15. So her whole life she's been like, I can't make the same mistakes that my mom made. But then when she's 24, she accidentally gets arti um, artificially, artificially inseminated. inseminated because the doctor who ends up being an important character in her set, like on its own, um, She's supposed to give her just like an examination. She's supposed to give someone else the insemination, oh, wow. but she's really upset because she was recently dumped and also is hungover. So she messes up the paperwork and does each to the wrong person. Oh my God. <laughs> and she doesn't know that that happened to her right away. And then by the time she finds out, she's already pregnant. So she really is Jane the Virgin, <laughs> oh who's God. like, goodness miraculously pregnant um but like she has a boyfriend and everything that's like obviously not the father oh wow and then the actual father like that becomes a whole thing it's a real cluster yeah so it's like a big play on like a telenovela so it's very like it's like goofy but it's like very aware because like yeah. they, they reference a real telenovela a lot but like their own lives are also like that but yeah. they're just like not aware and it's also there's like a murder mystery thrown in and it's very funny wholesome <laughs> crazy <laughs> kind of it's not, is it in so, the vein of like um our amazon show that you don't like Maisel? yeah um yeah kind of, i'd say like same amount of like drama to yeah. comedy ratio yeah i feel attacked <laughs> Just want to say. That's how I describe that show now. The one that You'll never <laughs> live it down. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's hear it. So I said, no sudden move, I said. Mm -hmm. Loki. I just finished that like two days ago. Great. Great. And then Luca oh, on Disney+. Luca Plus. Good. I need to see that. Yeah. It was really good. Just uh, Pixar does it again. Yep. I've seen a meme that's pretty funny. You know how Soul was all about like feelings having feelings like f all about feelings yeah it said like oh pick classic pixar 1995 what if toys had feelings 1999 what if monsters had feelings what if cars had feelings what if, and then inside out what if humans had feelings <laughs> and then soul what if feelings had feelings <laughs> and then the last one it's been like edited like poorly on purpose and it says 2021. What if Italians had feelings? <laughs> <laughs> funny. But yeah, really good. Yeah, I liked it. Um, we won't spoil it. Yeah, you have to go. Great. Check it out. Definitely. But um, yeah, I don't. I couldn't put my finger on anything like really new. I've been watching because I caught up with Rick and Morty. Well, you still got to watch some new ones. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I was watching that stuff, and then... There's a couple episodes. Well, I've only watched two, but the second one, I was like, wow, they, Rick and Morty does pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that show's so good. I've been watching Firefly Lane, which is on Netflix. That's actually a current show. It has, like, Katherine Heigl. 
Sure. And someone else who like on the fourth episode, I was like, how do I know this woman? Her voice is so familiar. And I looked her up and she voices Beth in Rick and Morty. Oh, crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know voice actors were actual actors. I know. <laughs> I and she's you had like to go really the other good way. too. It was like weird because I was, I never thought of like what would the person yeah. who voices Beth look like, but I was like, it's not this. It's, like it's weird seeing crazy a face. You placed that. Yeah. Oh, you looked at no. You... Well, she sounded familiar. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I looked it up, I and that was how. Yeah. I like to pride myself on <laughs> my. Uh, <laughs> That's. <laughs> I can recognize a voice anywhere. Some animated series when limited. <laughs> oh man. Oh. So I. Don't... I... Oh, did ahead. you watch In the Heights? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I did. Oh, I know you did, but Sarah, when you were on your like month long vacation, Sarah was like, "I think I might watch it," oh, yeah. and she and hasn't yet. So I, I still am, and I, I think I'm gonna love it. That's what she said. <laughs> That's exactly what I said to him. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I just keep forgetting. Um, but I heard a song from it that I've now listened to like every day, and I'm like, Ooh, man. Yeah. The song alone. <laughs> I'm sold. The Lin Manuel Miranda song, Pierre Agua. That's oh, the one. No. no <laughs> he has one song. One. And... Oh, yeah. For what? Why? He didn't need <laughs> because he own... wrote and created it. He can do he whatever he wants. To be in it. He didn't need to be in it. Just wait till we get to the letterbox review. You're going <laughs> to love it. <laughs> oh, okay, so I have a trailer for a show coming out on Disney Plus August 11th called What If. It's my dad's birthday. Yeah, peace. I love peace. I'd be out of a job with peace. (gasps) Do we know each other? Time. Reality. Reality. It's changeable. Where you want to be? That's the question, isn't it? Every universe is different. Each one unique. Slow down a little bit. There's a few people in the room that don't understand. Not me, I I get it. Who are you? The name's Captain Carter. Scheisse! I am the Watcher. I observe all that transpires here. But I do not, cannot, will not interfere. I guess I have to freestyle then. Hey! We have you out of bird. A ravager never flies solo. I said never flies solo. Uh, is that some kind of catchphrase? <laughs> You had me worried for a second. Journey to face the unknown and ponder the question. What if? They actually got, with the exception of a few, like all of the actors like play their characters, like their voices. Why didn't they make it real life? I think they could just do more with animation. Is this another why they do it that way <laughs> question? Well, what if they did it in real life? Oh, God. <laughs> no, that was cool. <laughs> what is, is Marvel just breaking the universe by making this whole multiverse thing? Yeah. A reality? I, so I th- like, we can do anything because nothing's real. So I think there's two things at play here. They're just kind of like, getting us ready for this new Doctor Strange movie and the new Spider-Man movie, which I think are supposed to be, like, Mm mind-bending. Like, Tobey Maguire is going to show up, and so is Andrew Garfield, and so is Miles Morales is going to be there. So, like, there's going to be four Spider-Men, you know, all that stuff. 
But I think that What If was actually a comic series. I think so, yeah. That they're like, let's just do it. Fill in the gaps between Loki and the next thing. Mm. And, and I think, like, for fans, like, they took some, like, just, like, what if it was Peggy who was Captain America? I think a lot of it is just like, oh, what do you guys want to see? Sure. Oh, and yeah. it is the last, like, acting credit that Chad's, Chadwick Boseman's going to get because he recorded it before he died. Oh, oh so that wow. was. I didn't know. If I don't know if it. all of it is. But, but some of it. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. I, um, I like that it's almost like 90s animation. Yeah, it mm. looks like, cool. From when there like was like sp- the Spider-Man like cartoon. Yeah, like, it looked a lot like Claws. Yeah. Remember that movie? Mm-mm. Yeah, I mean an updated version, but like as you remember yeah. it of like oh, I'm gonna watch Batman or Spider-Man or whatever mm. on like Saturday morning. That's kind of what it reminded me of, which that's kind of cool because it's mm. like got a piece of that for a lot of the fans. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, cool. And then I threw these two on for you guys each ted lasso season two is out tomorrow can't wait wow <laughs> so pumped that they went out there having a season two i have not seen any of it so it yeah, is but. the epitome of like just like it's funny and you there's times you just like wow this is really funny but it's just like a feel good it's almost like a sappy feel good show mm. like over and over, every episode is just like, oh, they did it again. Just happy <laughs> and feel good. Like, I love Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. He's so and good. His, the specific brand of comedy him and like the assistant coach have in the show, um, it, like, I eat it up. It is <laughs> just really funny. In the fact that they're like fish out of water, so they'll make references like, Oh, yeah, that's, like, so many feet in the people in the show are like, that means nothing to me. <laughs> I know meters. Like, And then we got season three of Sex Education, September 17th. Nice. Cam's show. I didn't that one. And I feel like they left us with a bit of a, I forget, but, like, a bit of a cliffhanger. I started the first season. Oh, yeah, you haven't seen And I, I, I liked it. I just didn't finish it. Mm. Oh, that's exciting. I did not know about that. Yeah. All right. Time for the review. Oh, wow. I got three of them. <laughs> I like that you didn't write them on the page, so oh, these no. are new I to us. Oh, no. I want it to be a surprise. Yeah, we get our reactions here. All right. They all have the same theme of Lin-Manuel Miranda. All right. First one. Three stars for In the Heights. Sorry. I went into this knowing exactly who wrote the musical, but I still jumped every time Lin-Manuel Miranda was on the screen. (laughs) (laughs) This one's also three stars. I understood that Lin-Manuel Miranda would probably make a cameo, but I did not anticipate that many jump scares. (laughs) And then last one, two stars. I'm apparently allergic to the work of Lin-Manuel Miranda. (laughs) (laughs) Did you write all these? (laughs) Yeah, those were all mine, yeah. I don't know. He's he's good. He's he's got a... A thing that he does that's good, but I don't know. Mm. It's so, too much for me sometimes. I'll watch the movie, and then we didn't have a whole episode. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I feel like we could dive deeper into some of the, other than the British mm. Baking Show, which we cover. But <laughs> <laughs> Again, I feel personally attacked. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like Loki. Please, and, uh, please, let's <laughs> let's talk about a coming-of-age wizard. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's not what it's. <laughs> Loki um, in Loki the Heights. In the Heights. I, don't know, I think there was another one, but yeah. All right. So we got some good stuff coming your way. That's right. Not next week, though, because Cam and I will be on vacation. Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. He takes a whole summer off. <laughs> I'm taking a long weekend. We'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah.